Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 10 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. session of the 2019 Open Simulator Community Conference. In this session, we are happy to introduce a presentation which is called Going Underground, Wapping Tunnel in Open Sim. And our speaker is Graham Mills. Please check out the website at conference.opensimulator.org for speaker bios, details of our sessions, and the full schedule of events. Now, a little background for you. Graham Mills is a retired university academic with an amateur interest in the history of Liverpool and its railways. He used OpenSim as an aid to better understanding issues of place and scale within historical context. This talk will examine the potential and problems in using OpenSim to model the construction and operation of the landmark two kilometer wapping tunnel. For more information, please see his website http colon slash slash build to understand dot ten centuries dot org. Let me go ahead and paste it into the local chat for you to have as well. This session is being live streamed and recorded. So if you have questions or comments during the session, you may send tweets to at OpenSimCC with the hashtag pound OSCC19. Welcome everyone and let's begin the session. Hello, can, can everybody hear me okay? Uh, I'm uh, delighted to be here again. Um, I'm gonna be talking to you uh, about the Wapping Tunnel, which is uh, amazingly, uh, hang on, uh, just excuse me a moment whilst I try and restart my speakeasy. Okay, um, I'm going to have to do without a speakeasy, I'm afraid. The, um, the Wapping Tunnel is, as you can see, uh, a rather small tunnel. It runs under the uh, city of Liverpool. Uh, it is the western end of the Liverpool and Manchester Railway, which was opened in 1830. And it was... The railway was primarily designed so that they could move materials as quickly as possible uh, between Liverpool and Manchester, especially cotton. So all the cotton from the United States traveled over to Liverpool and went through this tunnel and on the railway uh, to uh, Manchester, where it was turned into textiles and then returned back to the docks at Liverpool and shipped across the world. Uh, the Wapping Tunnel was uh, a large tunnel. It was some 1.26 miles or two kilometers uh, and a major undertaking for engineers at that time. It went under the city largely because they wanted to keep trains off the roads. Uh, the gradient the, down from the hill where it was located, uh, where the entrance to, this, to the tunnel was located, a place called Edge Hill, uh, was too steep for the uh, locomotives they had at the time, so instead they used stationary engines in a special place called the Moorish Arch, and these powered a rope hauled system uh, to move the trains up and down. So this is what I'm interested in. A lot of the information that we have comes from artwork, which you can see here. Uh, so up at Edge Hill, at the top right there, you can see uh, that Moorish arch and either side, uh, those buildings contain the stationary engines that power uh, the uh, rope system that you can see down the center of the railway tracks. And the Wapping Tunnel was the central one of three tunnels at the end of the cutting. So if you swap around, as it were, 180 degrees, you're now looking down towards Liverpool. And if we swap over, you can see the tunnel just down towards the end where it approaches Wapping, down by the docks in the centre of Liverpool. And the trains emerge from there and run under the warehouse and the goods are lifted up into the warehouse. So this is uh, the uh, system that we're attempting to understand a little as to how it was built and uh, how it was operated. Uh, the tunnel is still there, so there are three tunnels. You can't actually see the Wapping Tunnel, it's in the middle there. Um, 
Uh, and as you can see that this area, which was formerly you know, a really uh, special place, has been allowed somewhat to go to uh, back to nature, as it were, uh, very, very sadly, because in terms of world history, this is actually a tremendously significant place. This is where the first railway uh, uh, from Liverpool to Manchester uh, started to operate. Trains would meet and join with their locomotives here and set off uh, 30 miles down the track. Back in the 1830s, however, it looked much more like this. There was this Moorish arch, now we're looking at it from the other side, uh, down towards the Wapping Tunnel, as we've said, in the middle. And you can see down the middle of the tracks that rope system powered by the steam engines located in those two uh, side engine houses and exhausted by the uh, two um, chimneys, which you can just about see uh, above the tunnels. The construction of the railway is rather poorly understood. Uh, here we can see the actual whopping tunnel, the central one of the three being uh, constructed. Uh, you can see above the cutting, uh, the horse engine or gin as it was called which was used to do all the heavy lifting so there was no steam uh, power actually involved in construction it horses were very deeply involved in uh, construction uh, equally uh, so were um, humans and you can see uh, that the stone that was extracted uh, was uh, dressed by masons and uh, sold commercially and you can see this activity going off down to the bottom right uh, the actual uh, portal that you can see, which is being constructed, below that you can see two lines of narrow gauge railway, and the narrow gauge railway uh, was used during construction and provided by the railway for use by contractors. The information that we have about the railway is relatively, and the, particularly the construction of the tunnel, is relatively limited. Um, what we do know is uh, derived in significant part from this profile, which was only available uh, to me at least earlier uh, this year. And uh, this is uh, an implementation of uh, a section by a very famous engineer called Thomas Telford, um, who uh, con compiled a report on the railway. And this shows just part of, his, of the section that he used for his report. And it shows the location of the borings, uh, which are shown in red, and the air shafts, which are shown in blue. And you can see Edge Hill is at the right here and whopping down at the, on the left. And what's nice about working in OpenSim is that you can use it to merge different data sources. So here, for example, I've superimposed this on a contemporary map uh, drawn from 1836. So we can see not only the profile, which is exaggerated uh, in the vertical scale, uh, but we can see how it relates to the actual location. And you can see, for example, the, the how the, the tunnel uh, in one place um, reaches virtually to the surface. And this is actually a quarry called Yellow Delf. And people like, could actually walk into the tunnel uh, from that particular location. And here you can see the position of Yellow Delf on the uh, track of the uh, tunnel, which goes under the city of Liverpool and down to the docks from Edge Hill at the top there down to Wapping at the bottom. Uh, there are still signs, although the, the tunnel is still there, there are relatively few signs now on the surface. Uh, we can see that there is a uh, air vent added much, much later on the surface at Crown Street. And that's in the picture on the right there. The way in which the tunnel was constructed uh, was by means of a series of eyes. And these were the shafts that were used to transport workers and return materials uh, into the tunnel during construction. So you can see the Crown Street site here with the ventilation tower uh, in a very rough model uh, from OpenSEM. 
So people would go down using a horse gin uh, and then along a little corridor and uh, work into the tunnel and expand out from there in both directions. So there are a number of these different eyes all the way along the tunnel. Now the traditional way of tunneling uh, was to make pilot tunnels or headings. And these were relatively um, small uh, tunnels, uh, very cramped and airless conditions uh, that would be expanded uh, basically just to make sure they meet up with adjacent tunnels being uh, built from the opposite um, eyes. In the case of the Wapping Tunnel, this may not have been done. And what I've attempted to do here is actually simulate the tunneling activity using a link set. Uh, if you look down, you can see that basically what I've done is created a big link set of about, um, I don't know, 400 prims or thereabouts, just a single script operating this. And as you click on the end of a prim, so it retreats back into the tunnel, giving the simulation of actual tunneling. And what seems likely in the case of the Wapping Tunnel is that they were actually extracting the stone for commercial use in the middle of this growing city of Liverpool. And as a consequence, uh, it was a slower process of actually extending the tunnel. And they used stone uh, as a platform also uh, for uh, roofing the, the tunnel, adding brickwork and so forth. By 1829, the tunnel was complete and, in fact, opened to the public briefly before the railway itself opened. And this just gives you an impression of what the tunnel may have looked like when it was illuminated by gas for early visitors. Uh, they actually had to double the, the number of gas lights in between uh, the uh, different openings uh, as they found that people couldn't find their way around. They also whitewashed uh, the sides of the tunnel in order to uh, improve the amount of vis uh, improve the visibility. So moving down now to the station itself at Wapping, you can see the little red uh, rectangle there. That's uh, where the uh, trains emerge. They only have their uh, brake wagon with them. They descend under gravity and they go under that warehouse that you can see uh, in uh, the red rectangle. And this is all that remains at the far end the, at Wapping. Uh, this is the uh, original tunnel portal, which is still present. And this is how it looked back in 1830. So this was the Wapping goods station. So at the top left there, we can see the tunnel portal as it would have been. And we're looking at it from underneath uh, that uh, warehouse. Uh, top right, we can are uh, looking now from the tunnel portal along the length of what was originally uh, a rope work. So it's a very long elongated uh, station. And at the bottom, we're looking all the way back at the warehouse, and we have a little goods station there, uh, which was used for uh, goods being prepared for transport to Manchester. Goods that would come down originally from Manchester would be stored in the warehouse, it would be lifted off the wagons by hoists, and off the side of the warehouse, which you can't see terribly well, uh, there were... Uh, additional hoists which were used to deliver the goods onto waiting horse-drawn uh, horse carts. So the uh, trains about to go back to Manchester would be drawn up the uh, tunnel by means of that rope uh, haulage system that I mentioned previously. So in outline, that's the the story of the Wapping Tunnel, uh, not well known, uh, but a, a, a very important historical artifact which still survives under the city of Liverpool. It's uh, in places, unfortunately, um, 
flooded so you can't get all the way across, through uh, from one end to the other uh, but there is a lot of interest in making at least parts of it available uh, for visiting during the forthcoming bicentenary which of course will be uh, in 2029 and of course the opening of the railway itself in 2030. So there's a lot of interest at the moment um, in trying to understand the the way in which the railway was constructed and the way in which it operated uh, with a view to making that information available uh, to others. Um, so that's, uh, that's my talk. Um, thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, I'm happy to uh, answer them. Yeah, let's see if we have any questions in local chat. And thanks, by the way, Lear Lobo, for typing his uh, stuff up. That really makes it easier for folks to see what he was talking about. I appreciate your assistance with that. Yeah, my apologies. The uh, this I have Speakeasy here as well, but unfortunately, it gave up. <laughs> yeah, and he'll be. Uh, when will you be at the uh, poster booth in Expo uh, Zone Three? Is there a good time if they want to stop by and talk with you? Uh, is there a, a particular break coming up? Uh, we'd have to look at the schedule. There's a break that comes up at 3 p.m., a half-hour break there between 3 and 3.30 p.m. Oh, well, let's say I'll be there. Time. I'll be there at that time then. Okay. So if you want to stop by and talk with him, and if you have some additional things you want to ask, that would be a good time as well. Yes, Kayaka, I, I, I do talk about the same thing every year, but, but in slightly different <laughs> perspectives, hopefully. Um, and you can see that basically I'm uh, the thing is – building incrementally, indeed, uh, as we go. Does it ever flood? Yes, it does flood. And um, it, it flooded very early on, actually. Uh, and they had also terrible trouble right near the, the emerge, where it emerged at Wapping, simply because uh, the um, uh, it goes very close underneath some houses. So it actually um, cut off some uh, some wells and some houses actually subsided as a consequence. The build isn't visitable, I'm afraid. It, it, this actually gives a rather false impression of what the build is. If the build is a lot of small builds. Um, if anybody's really interested, I can probably um, put something together. I have a huge number of small little bits um, <laughs> that uh, uh, are uh, not necessarily all connected. You'd appreciate that making a build one and a half miles along is is quite challenging uh, sorry for uh, for open sim well it yeah. is for, for my facilities anyway if i had one thing that i would really love of course in this context it would be able to to be able to tunnel properly uh, in open sim and then we could uh, have even more fun but maybe one day well if you ever want to do it in unity there's ways to bring it in there and uh, there are tunneling tools now there that can even be used at runtime indeed so, all right, well, thank you. Thank you uh, very much. Well, thank you, Graham Mills, for a terrific presentation there. As a reminder to our audience, you can see what's coming up on the conference schedule at conference.opensimulator.org. Follow this session, following this session, our next session will be at 10.30 a.m. in this same keynote region, and it's entitled Pilgrims at Virtual Harmony. Also, we encourage you to visit the OSCC 19 Poster Ex Expo in the OSCC Expo 3 region to find accompanying information on presentations and to explore the hypergrid tour resources in OSCC Expo 2 region, along with the sponsor and crowdfunder booths located throughout all of the OSCC Expo regions.